Joining me is National Senator Matt Canavan, a former Resources Minister and campaigner for More Dams. Matt Canavan, thanks for your time. I mean, what a waste. So much water that could have been trapped, could have been dammed, will need it one day, flowing to waste in the sea. It is so very sad, uh, Andrew. I've, as you say, been campaigning for uh, dams for years and years and years. We are building one not far from where I am today, uh, uh, the Rookwood Weir just near Rockhampton. That was one we got over the line. Uh, but it's been so hard just trying to convince the state governments in particular uh, to get these things done. As you've alluded to, uh, most of these state governments have been uh, under the spell of the climate change cult and they've bought the, bought the scare campaign that somehow it won't rain again. I mean, just a few years ago, Dan Andrews was saying, we, can't, we don't need to build dams in Victoria because we're not going to get the rain because of climate change. And now look what's happened. And, you know, floods always bring enormous devastation to people, and that's tragic. We're seeing that on our TV screens. Uh, people's homes flooded, businesses gone, lives get lives lost. Uh, the, the one silver lining from a big flooding event in this country is if you have a dam, if you have somewhere to store it, that can bring... Uh, prosperity, uh, wealth, opportunity, jobs, uh, especially to those rural areas in the years that follow that devastation. But of course, if we don't do that, it all goes out to sea. You wave goodbye to it. And uh, we also wave goodbye to the opportunities for our nation uh, to grow more food and develop our country. So look, this, but this government, they cut $7 billion from dams in the budget a few weeks ago. There's not a lot of hope with them. They didn't promise that, they didn't say that before the election. And then six months later, they're cutting the knees uh, uh, off from under the, uh, the under regional Australia who would love to have these opportunities. Well, you, you mentioned that. Yes, indeed. The Albanese government scrapped plans to spend $6 billion on dams just on the Burdekin River in Queensland that would have been used for irrigation. I mean, what is, what is our problem with dams? Are they really so outlandish? I mean, you, you can barely get to first base with an idea now. Well, I think uh, when you say what is it with dams, uh, it's because the Labor Party need the votes and preferences of the Greens political parties. That's, uh, uh, that's been the trade-off that's uh, happened ever since the days of the Franklin Dam in the early 80s. The Labor Party have been playing footsie uh, with the Greens and they're not always that transparent about it. As I say, at the election, they didn't say anything about their plans to cut $7 billion from dams. It was $5.4 billion from the dam you mentioned up there at the Burdekin. There's another $500 million from Urana Dam, uh, as well as Emu Swamp and Hewenden irrigation schemes also cut. And so that funding is all gone for now, and it's such a missed opportunity given all the work that I know a lot of local people have done uh, to get these projects to the starting line. And it's just so hypocritical too. I see Anthony Albanese over there at G20 in Indonesia saying, hey, we can feed the world. Have you heard that? He's been saying over there that, you know, Australia's got this wonderful agricultural produce and, and we can help the world recover from the food shortages inflicted by Vladimir Putin's aggression in Eastern Europe. Well, our me you know, <laughs> message to Albo, if you don't build dams, you're not going to be able to grow the food. And wouldn't it be great if we could do that for the world and, and create opportunity for our country in the process? But we have to build that infrastructure to make it happen. Too right. Matt Canavan, last night the Prime Minister met Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping. Uh, it's the first meeting that Xi has granted to an Australian Prime Minister in six years. He's put us in the deep freeze in the meantime. Now, this is supposed to lead to China dropping its trade bans on us. But China's official broadcaster, CCTV, is uh, today reporting that Xi told Albanese in private last night that if we do want better ties with China... It is hoped that the Australian side will provide a good business environment for Chinese enterprises to invest and operate in Australia. They've actually got bans on our trade, but they want easier access to theirs. That's not so promising, is it? It's not, Andrew, and I don't know if we're getting the full story from the Australian side of these discussions. Uh, I think it's extremely unfortunate in the last few months that uh, Anthony Albanese and the Australian Labor Party have tried to weaponise our nation's foreign policy. They've done that with the US by somehow suggesting that uh, the coalition's position on climate change uh, uh, jeopardise the relationship, our most important relationship with the United States. And they're, they're surreptitiously doing it here uh, with China, uh, briefing out and suggesting that somehow if Scott Morrison was Prime Minister, we wouldn't have this meeting. We've got to remember the history here. The history here is the reason... Uh, the Chinese Communist Party is angry with us is not because of Scott Morrison, not because of the coalition. It was because we as a country took the 
right and proper decision, the courageous decision to say no uh, to Huawei building our 5G network, to say no to China having untrammeled access to our foreign investment markets uh, and say no uh, to, to Chinese influence in our politics. That's why the Chinese Communist Party is upset with us. And it's very clear from the briefings from the Chinese side that they expect Anthony Albanese and the Labor Party uh, to, to give, give ground uh, on, on those matters uh, if there is to be progress in these relationships. So, as I say, I think Anthony Albanese and the Australian Labor Party has to be much more transparent with the Australian people about what exactly they are discussing with the Chinese uh, government and are they at all contemplating weakening uh, those very strong and bipartisan-supported measures that we put in place to protect our national interest in the last decade. We, we, they have form here. Penny Wong opposed the changes in the foreign investment thresholds that we put up at the time and again at the election. They didn't oppose that. Uh, they notionally support those changes now, the Labor Party, but they've we got to be see. more upfront with us here uh, because, as I say, they're trying to politicise foreign policy and it's not very pretty. Mike Canavan, thank you so much for your time.